All right, what's up everybody? In today's video, I wanted to walk you through how I write an API client in Go. In software development, it's inevitable that you'll need to make some sort of API request, and you need some way to write a client that will make that request for you. So I wanted to walk you through how I do this and how to make it pretty easily testable. So in this video, we're gonna be using this Hyrule Compendium API. I've been playing Tears of the Kingdom uh, after a long hiatus and uh, thought it'd be fun to uh, use an API like this to demonstrate. So this API isn't very complex. There's no authentication or anything that needs to take place for this, but it transfers data over HTTP, so that seems like it will do the trick for this video. Basically, what I'm going to do is make a request to a particular category. Basically, I want to get all of the monsters from the monsters category. So that's what we're going to be doing today is just making a request to fetch those uh, entities. Uh, something to note is that in order to do this for Tears of the Kingdom, we need to add a query parameter that uh, is specified with this TOTK. So uh, that's something else we'll need to do for this API. All right, and something else I'm gonna do in this video is show you how to unit test your API client. Uh, in particular, I'm gonna show you how you can use mocking uh, to make assertions about how you're using your underlying dependencies. So I'm gonna be using this uh, library called mock, which is maintained by uh, Uber. And basically it just allows us to generate mock implementations of a, um, particular dependency, and then we can make assertions about how we're using uh, that dependency in our unit tests. Okay, so let's hop over to the code and I'll show you how I like to uh, get started with an API client. So uh, basically I've got a package here that has a client file and I've got a main app here file that's empty. I've also got a make file that is not filled in yet, but going into the client, I like to start off with a struct that can hold my dependencies, uh, and then I can uh, add methods to that that um, represent the behavior I want. I'm gonna create a client, and our client is going to uh, have some configuration information. I'm gonna have a base URL, which corresponds to this base URL from the API endpoint we're using. So being able to parameterize this uh, is quite helpful when you have multiple environments. Something else we're going to have is uh, an underlying HTTP client. So in Go, the standard library has an HTTP client that we can create, and our API client is basically just going to be a wrapper around this. So what we're going to be doing is providing an HTTP client as a dependency to our API client. Okay, that's good. Let's create a constructor for this as well. Looks like uh, my IDE is doing this for me, which is nice. Base URL, HTTP client, that's all good. One thing to note is that I would like to be able to mock the behavior of the underlying HTTP client. So we're gonna be making a slight modification to this a little bit later. So what I wanna do is uh, set up my base URL here. I'm gonna copy this and I'll define this at the top of my file here. Let's create a, a method that allows us to fetch monsters. Before we get into that, I'd like to take a look at what our uh, response structure looks like and then create go types to represent our payload. So let's take a look down here at entry schemas. Basically, this is the structure of what a monster uh, response will look like. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. I'm gonna go ahead and create a go representation of this uh, payload. Oh, let's see. Wow, that was fancy. I didn't know you could do that. I'm gonna change these to strings because that's pretty much, I think, what we're gonna be getting here. It's got a array of strings or null for unknown and an array of strings here. That was pretty cool. I didn't realize uh, my IDE would do that. Let's call this monster. Now what I want to do is create a method. Here we go. It's filling it in for me. This is great. So I'm gonna return a slice of monsters. The response payload might be a little bit different than this, but we'll figure that out as we go. So what I'm gonna do is say request is equal to http.new request. I can just pass in git. We've got a URL, this will be the base URL. And we also get back an error here.
Okay, so let's pass nil for the third argument. We have no body for an HTTP GET request here. One other thing I need to do, we're gonna be invoking the request using this HTTP client.do method. So I'm gonna go ahead and auto-complete that. Handle the error. Before we do that, I wanna make sure that our URL has the query parameter that specifies that we want to look for Tears of the Kingdom monsters. Okay, so basically what we're doing here is we're getting the URL associated with this object here, um, and then we are appending the game query parameter to it and re-encoding it back into the URL. One thing I forgot here is that I'm using the base URL, but I need to make sure that I'm specifying that we want to hit the monsters endpoint. So I believe that's slash category slash monsters. Let's double check that that's correct. Yep, category slash monsters. So that looks good. Okay. Now that we've got our request set up to the monsters endpoint and our uh, game query parameter configured, in addition to the uh, request being uh, executed via this do method, uh, let's go ahead and set up our response unmarshalling so that we can return a slice of monsters here. So one thing to note is that we actually return a single object that contains a data key that will contain a slice of monsters. So I'm going to make that change here real quick. So just like this, we're actually going to have a data key and that's actually going to be a uh, slice of monsters returned. So instead of doing this, let's just go ahead and do get monsters response. I'm going to return a, re a pointer because I'm returning nil here. And now, I'm going to use uh, a JSON decoder because our response has a body that's an IO read closer. So a JSON decoder will allow me to pass that in directly and uh, unmarshal it into uh, this response directly. So let's do json.new decoder. I can pass in a reader, which will be our response body. Then I can pass in, uh, call this decode method, and pass in the response directly. One thing I need to do is capture the error that's returned from decode. So it looks like we are getting this uh, response unmarshaled. Now we can just return it directly. So at this point, we've got this uh, this request pretty much implemented, I want to go to this client file and test it out. So what I'm going to do is create uh, an instance of this uh, client using this constructor with the base URL. I'm going to provide an HTTP client and I will call the get monsters endpoint. One of the reasons I like to provide a HTTP client directly to the new client is because I can uh, configure some information, uh, some parameters on this directly. So I want to be able to set the timeout. So I'll just set it to like 10 seconds. Now we can call the get monsters method, return the response in an error. I'm going to go ahead and do the error handling, and then we can iterate over the response data, which is a slice of monsters. All right, and we'll just print out the monster like that. Oop, failed to unmarshal monsters HTTP response. Let's take a look at that. And I think I might need to pass in a pointer to that there. All right, that was it. Cool, so now we are iterating over all the monsters in this response. Pretty cool stuff. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how to write a unit test for this API client. Now, when we write a unit test for this, I don't want to actually make a HTTP request to this API. I want to actually mock that. Rather than providing a concrete implementation of this HTTP client directly, 
I'm actually going to create an interface for the method that I'm invoking, which is this do method here. I'm going to actually accept an HTTP client interface, and uh, that will allow us to mock this dependency in unit tests. So let's go ahead and set that up. And just like that, my IDE filled in, filled in these details for us. This is exactly what I want. Instead of using this HTTP client type directly, let's go ahead and use the one that I've created above. Okay, and I'm gonna accept this as a type as well. There's no complaints over here because this HTTP client does implement the do method that we have defined here. Next, let's look into generating a mock implementation of this HTTP client. That way, when we start writing a unit test, we can construct this new client and provide our mock implementation, which satisfies this do method. And then we can make assertions about how we want that to behave or how it should behave when we invoke the get monsters uh, method call. As I mentioned, we're using this tool called mock and there's a command line uh, tool we can use called mock gen. Uh, basically, we just need to provide the source, which is the uh, client file that has the HTTP client interface, a destination where it will output the generated code. So let's go ahead and do that. In our make file, I'm just going to create a command called mocks, and we'll call mock gen. Source will be the package, the file name. Destination will be the same package. Uh, except I'm going to put it in a mock HTTP client. It'll be in a file called client. And let's pass the name of our interface. Okay. So now you can see that this new file and directory are generated. And this has got our mock HTTP client, which we can use uh, in our unit tests. I wanted to show you a quick example from the mock documentation on how we can use the mock implementation of our dependency. So here's a quick example. Um, this is our function that we're testing that is provided some dependency, which is an interface. A mock version of that dependency has been created and we have a constructor here that we can use. In our tests, all we have to do is create a go mock controller. The controller will be provided to the mock implementation. So for us, this would be new HTTP client or new mock HTTP client. We'll provide it with a controller. We'll make any assertions about how we're expecting it to be used by our function that we're testing. And then all we have to do is invoke the function or method that we're testing, which makes use of our mock implementation. So this would be our wrapper API client, which accepts a mock implementation uh, of our HTTP client. This is basically the pattern that we're going to be following in our unit test. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create our test file and we'll underscore test as the suffix in this package. Let's go ahead and say test client. Of course, we pass in a testing T object to it. What I'm going to do first is create the controller as uh, shown in the previous example. Uh, this has already got it filled out for me. We've got go mock new controller and we provide our testing object. Uh, I also want to go ahead and create the instance of our mock HTTP client. So let's say mock HTTP client is equal to new mock HTTP client. And this takes in the controller that we've already created up here. So now that I've got this mock HTTP client, I've got these methods on here that will help me mock the behavior I want. So we've got this expect. What I can do here is specify that I'm expecting a certain object to be provided to this do method. This will allow me to make assertions about the HTTP request that I'm providing to this client. And then I can simulate the object that I want to be returned from the client. And this will help me verify that I'm handling that response correctly. So what we want to do here is I want to create a test request that I'm expecting to be passed to this mock do function. So I'm going to say expected request I'll do HTTP dot new request just like we did in the actual code. We're expecting a get method and our URL will be, we need to create a base URL actually first. And we were expecting it to call category slash monsters. And we are expecting the query parameter to be provided to that as well. 
and we did not provide any body. I'm also using a helper package here called uh, Testify. You may or may not be familiar with that, but this will allow me to make assertions a lot easier. This allows me to use this require package. I'm asserting that there was no error involved with just constructing this. And what I'm gonna do here is expect that an object that looks like this is provided to this do method. Now in the response here, I need to prepare the expected payload that I want for my test. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, now that I've got a uh, sample response here, I'm gonna go ahead and create uh, or marshal the expected JSON so that I can put that in the response body here. All right, so my response will have a body and I can basically just use um, bytes new buffer to turn this into a reader implementation that I can wrap in a noop closer and that will satisfy uh, the type for the response body here. So we'll do body and let's do bytes.new buffer. I can just pass in the JSON bytes. But it's complaining because it needs to be a read closer, and we can just say io.noop closer to satisfy that. Okay, so that looks good in terms of what we're expecting to be returned. And at this point, I can now create our instance of our API client. Let's go ahead and do that. We've got new client, we pass in the base URL. So we're using our test base URL and we're using our mock HTTP client. So we can make assertions about how we're using those things and verifying that uh, we're providing the correct request and handling the uh, responses correctly. If I call client.getMonsters, I'll get a response and an error, a potential error. I'm not expecting an error at this point, so we'll just say no error. And at this point, I should expect my response I received to be equal to this expected response up here. So just to walk through all of this, we've got a controller. We've created our mock HTTP client using that controller. We've got a test base URL that's provided to our client and used to construct our uh, HTTP request here. This HTTP request is expected to be provided to this do method, and we're expecting to receive this as a response. And this just validates that we're handling this correctly. Okay, and really quick, I had an, uh, a mistake up here. Uh, I was passing in expected request instead of the expected response. So just one thing to clear up there. Now we can go ahead and run go test. Okay, so we're actually expecting two values to be returned. But here I am actually only returning one. So what I need to do is return the uh, error value that I want, which is going to be nil in this scenario. Okay, great. So now this is running correctly. We are passing in the expected request to the do method and returning the response that we want to handle. If we wanted to handle our error cases, we could actually return nil, for example, as this uh, HTTP response and then provide an actual error value here and see how our API client uh, handles that if we're expecting that. So uh, as an exercise for you, uh, mess around with these uh, requests, mess around with the URLs, change the method, um, see what breaks and uh, see what kind of things you can do with this. Something I also hope you got from this video is the uh, importance of using dependency injection and how that makes your testing a whole lot more comprehensive by providing an interface to our client here, an HTTP client interface, we were able to provide different implementations and this made testing a whole lot easier. I hope you uh, are able to see the benefits of using dependency injection, especially when it comes to testing and just building uh, you know, reusable components and uh, a lot cleaner code. Hopefully this video was useful. Um, this is how I like to write my API clients. Yeah, but if you want to see more content like this, definitely consider subscribing uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.